Hello and uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Jitan Shrum, the director of the Grad Office, and uh, welcome to the Grad Dialogue. Today, my, sec uh, my guest is uh, Secretary Thomas Zawaki. Uh, you know, he is, uh, you know, a Secretary of uh, Education and Workforce Cabinet in Frankfurt. Uh, he knows firsthand what the Kentucky businesses expect uh, when it comes to the workforce. His experience uh, as a business leader uh, comes from more than 33 years in private sector, uh, including about 22 years plus in and with the Toyota Com to Corporation. Secretary Zawaki uh, brings experience to his role as a, as a secretary of the Kentucky's Education and Workforce Cabinet, uh, where he oversees the uh, work of educating, preparing, and training Kentucky's current and future workforce, which is most important uh, for the upcoming century for us. Uh, prior to his appointment as secretary in July of 2013, he served as the commissioner of the De uh, Department of Vehicle Regulations with the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet. He also served uh, on the Kentucky Workforce Investment Board from 2009 to, to 13. And during that time, the, uh, the Investment Board implemented the Work Smart Kentucky. You know, this is a strategy uh, to, to transport the Kentucky's workforce development system to better prepare and equip workers and serve employers in the Commonwealth. Uh, he holds a degree in business administration from Ferris State University <coughs> and a master's uh, in procurement management from Webster University. Uh, Secretary, welcome to the Grad Dialogue and uh, welcome to Grad. You know? Thank you, Jitan. Yeah. It's great to be here. Yeah. And uh, we, we had really had a great chat uh, and a new president at two uh, of our board of directors this afternoon. Mm -hmm. And it was a great uh, kind of insight about what is happening in this uh, Commonwealth. And as a secretary, I know that uh, you know governor's administration is about ten plus insight about what is happening in this uh, Commonwealth. I know that uh, you know governor's administration is about ten plus insight about what is happening in this uh, Commonwealth. I know that uh, and as a secretary, administration, the Bashir administration has been absolutely. You know, we're at the lowest level of unemployment in the last seven years. Uh -huh. At the depths of the recession, our unemployment rate in Kentucky was 10.7 percent. Hmm. Now it's it's at uh, significantly lower, at 5.7 percent. In fact, right here in the in the grad, uh, we have some of the lowest unemployment rates. Uh, Hancock County, I right. think, is at 3.9 right. percent, right. and right here in Davis County. It's at uh, four point two percent, I believe, uh -huh. is the number. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, you, you you give me credit for workforce development initiatives and and uh, finding the right people for companies. <clears throat> but I've got to say that what happens here in the grad is extremely significant. We're very proud of what you're doing here and the workforce development initiatives and the jobs that you're uh, uh, finding for folks that need those jobs and the training and, and retraining that, that is being done is something you should be very proud of. Well, um, thank, thank you, Secretary. That's a great compliment, but I think it's uh, you know, got a lot to do with, uh, with the cooperation and working you know, with uh, elected officials and our staff and also you know, the, 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 your office in this region, you know, the, the economic development folks and education folks and everything else. But I got to say in my, uh, you know, decades of service, you know, with grad, uh, you know, I had dealt with many secretaries, you know, and the governor's cabinet and everything else, but you have been the most easy to access and so easy to talk to and also so easy to understand our needs, you know. So, I mean, I do want to, you know, express well, my appreciation. I appreciate that, that. You know, I've been great, especially in the light of, new uh, or reauthorized legislation on the workforce innovations and investment uh, op op uh, innovation opportunity act so let's talk about that that kind of okay. changes the face of the whole workforce area that's a very popular and, uh -huh. and very important subject uh, in in light of what's happening uh, right now as a matter of fact the uh, workforce innovation and opportunities act is the sweeping legislation that was uh, passed on a bicameral basis by the federal government uh, with uh, huge uh, uh, bipartisan support <clears throat> to basically revolutionize how we uh, do things in workforce mm -hmm. development mm -hmm. and resources for the unemployed and resources for those that are physically and, uh, challenged and, and other uh, uh, challenges that, that folks experience in addition to uh, a, a huge uh, increase in the amount of funds that are being designated now for at-risk youth. I see. Um, 
the the work the the WIOA we call it. Uh -huh. um, I have to joke and stop and say WIOA. That's not a cough drop, <laughs> uh, but uh, <coughs> WIOA replaces the original Workforce Investment Act of 1998. Uh -huh. This is the first uh, major legislation that has occurred uh, since 1998. So there's been tremendous opportunity over the years to identify improvement areas, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and uh, we we are uh, just now getting started uh, for a July 1st, 2015 implementation, I see. partial implementation. And the first thing that the federal government charged all the states with is to take a look at their current uh, workforce investment areas, I see. consider the establishment of economic regions, mm -hmm. and we uh, selected a, a wide uh, a variety of individuals throughout the state mm -hmm. to participate on what we're calling our steering committee for designation or even redesignation of the workforce investment areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and at the end of January, uh, the steering committee identified uh, uh, its, its uh, uh, things that uh, should be considered in terms mm -hmm. of uh, of the designations and redesignations, and they came up with a recommendation for uh, uh, various models <coughs> for the workforce investment areas and the regions, and those uh, recommendations were reviewed with the uh, chief elected officials uh, on each of the the uh, the ads. Um, they w were out for public comment actually uh -huh. last uh -huh. week. We, uh -huh. we visited three different uh, regions of the state and obtained uh, hundreds of comments mm -hmm. regarding what the recommendations mm -hmm. entailed uh, that the steering committee came up with. Mm -hmm. And actually right now, today, which is the 11th of, of uh, February, <clears throat> the steering committee is meeting trying to sift and sort through all the information uh -huh. that we received and trying to come up with its ultimate recommendation uh -huh. that it will make to the work, the Kentucky right. Workforce right. Investment Board. Uh -huh. So, so Sarah, people watching this show, you know, uh, in, even the elected officials, a group, then the citizens themselves watching this, and then the private sector. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, with all this process, you know, I'm sure there's a goal that the mission that you have and your cabinet have has is to how can we help those three segments? You know, what, what, what does VIO and everything else means to the local elected officials? What does it mean to the private sector employers? And what does it mean to the citizens who are either looking for a job or you know, trying to improve their skills or something? Well, it's, it's sweeping legislation uh -huh. that uh -huh. will provide uh, numerous benefits, both financial and non-financial both education and both tra and in addition to training opportunities. Mm -hmm. will also help uh, employers find the, the candidates that they need to perform the jobs uh, of the 21st century mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well. And uh, we're very uh, fortunate that this legislation occurred uh, at the timing it did because mm -hmm. frankly, we're just coming out of the Great Recession. I mentioned Kentucky's unemployment rate is, is right. the lowest in, right. in several years. Right. Exports are at record levels. Uh -huh. uh, business recruiting is at record levels. Um, in addition to things like the high school graduation rate, <coughs> high school graduation rate in the 2011 and 12 uh, school year, uh, it was 87%, I'm uh -huh. sorry, 86%. Uh -huh. And in the 2012 and 13 school year, it was 87.5%. Last, last school year, we were fourth in the nation in terms of high school graduation rate. Wow. And in addition, and I'll get to my point, <coughs> uh -huh. in addition, the uh, uh, work ready and, and college ready level uh -huh. is the highest in, in many, many years. It's 62%. Just a few short years ago, it was only in the 40% uh, wow. rate. So there, we're making uh -huh. tremendous progress uh -huh. in work ready, uh, college ready, high school graduation rates, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we're, we're coming out of the Great Recession, and what better time for the Workforce Innovation and Opportunities Act to be introduced to help even further uh -huh. have more people employed, find more people for business and industry, attract more business, business and industry to the state, which will create more jobs, and it's, it's a perpetual kind of cycle. It's exciting. So really, it's gonna, it's gonna uh, uh, apply to all the sectors of the society, and I think you know, and, and uh, this which is excellent because you know, in 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 the past, you know, we have we had seen some you know disconnect between the workforce training and the education side, you know, and the private sector side. There are no silos. You know, you kind of breaking all the walls, and you know, work on a, on a on a, you know, and the mission that is will be a, a, a you know providing great skilled workers opportunities for the unemployed, 
and then at the same time you know, providing some uh, regional movement, regional cooperation. You know, um, you, you you mentioned Secretary uh, uh, the word work ready communities. Yes. I know that was something that started during your administration. So tell us what is it, what it is, and how does it apply to the grad region? You know? Yeah, work ready communities is a, an exciting program. Uh, it, it's a certification for uh -huh. counties to uh, demonstrate strengths in various areas. For example, high school graduation rate, uh, second or post-secondary education attainment mm -hmm. rate, the rate of uh, a national career readiness uh, certificate holders, um, how, uh, how wired are they uh, broadband wise? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What is their computer literacy? Does their community support this kind of initiative? And there are other criteria. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When measured and, and considered all together, can allow a community be, to become what is called a work ready community. And this sends a strong business, or <coughs> sends a strong message to business and industry that this community has not only the, the people there ready to work, but the people with the skills that they need Agreed. to do the yeah. job that uh -huh. employers uh -huh. need. Uh -huh. And so <clears throat> our, our goal is by the end of the Bashir administration that all 120 counties in the Commonwealth have some level of, of uh, involvement in the work ready I communities uh, pro program. And in fact, we have 16 counties left to engage. Mm. And I predict that we're going to engage all those, those counties be before the end of the, the uh -huh. Bashir administration. Uh -huh. we, we've had tremendous support from Governor Bashir on this uh -huh. uh, program. Uh -huh. and. Uh, we uh, we feel that we will continue to, to make uh -huh. progress. Well, we we want to thank you because you know you and your cabinet, you know, and agencies, you know, in our region, in all of the counties and all of the elected officials. I think I believe that the uh, I, I, if I if I may, the, the grad uh, almost all seven counties are either like you mentioned this morning, work ready or work ready in progress. That's a very good point, uh -huh. and, and I'm not sure many. Many, any, many uh, ad development districts can uh -huh. Uh -huh. make that claim. But you're right, every county in grad is either work ready or uh -huh. work ready uh -huh. in progress. And that's a tremendous achievement. Yeah. And, then, and add to that, I think you know, we've been working with the uh, Economic Development Cabinet and the, gov in the Governor's Office as well to make what industrial site, uh, uh, I believe they call it, uh, I don't know, prog I mean, the ready to be occupied kind of thing. So ready to be, you know, all the infrastructure to, you know, to start a business or industries. And now we've got the skills to the work ready community. So this is what a great opportunity we have. It is a great opportunity. Yeah. And the work ready communities is a great selling tool, uh -huh. my friends uh -huh. at Economic Development tell me. Uh -huh. When they're recruiting business to Kentucky and they're asking businesses that already are here to expand their facilities, uh -huh. Uh -huh. being in or recruiting a work ready community is a tremendous advantage for Kentucky. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So really, the VIO that we're talking about uh, is, is not just another program. You know, it, it has a very, uh, very, very defined <coughs> you know, you know, strategies to, to achieve some of the performance as time goes on. What does it, what, what does it take active as far as implementation the is concerned? The first implementation of WIO is, is July 1st, uh -huh. 2015. And as the rulemaking uh, uh, policy issues, uh, policy decisions are made by the federal government and given to each of the states, we will then create our own policy based on the governor's direction to establish our own policy and, and way of doing things. And between J July 1st, 2015 and July 1st, 2016, uh -huh, uh -huh. we will accomplish 100% implementation of WIOA. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you uh, for being on the Grad Dialogue. I do want to you know, thank you for recognizing the, uh, the, the working cooperation among the agencies and the elected officials in seven counties. Uh, and I, I, think, I think we're looking for a <clears throat> tremendous future with your experience and leadership, you know, because you know, it's, it's not that uh, e uh, every day that we find somebody in the leadership position, though those person had a 33 plus years of private sector experience, that you know what they want, you know how to deliver, and you know, we, we look forward to working with you. We try very hard, Jatin, yes. but let me just emphasize, our job is made very easy by people like you oh, and, thank you. and ad districts like GRAD. Uh -huh. You are doing a fantastic job in this area and you deserve a lot of compliments and accolades. You, your staff, the partners within the, the GRAD area, business and industry as well. Well, thank you very much. And again, and welcome to the GRAD. Uh, again, I want to thank you for uh, listening, watching the GRAD Dialogue. We've been talking to Secretary Thomas Zawacki, who is the, the Secretary of Education and Workforce Cabinet, and talking about the new upcoming legislation and also how it's going to help 
the, uh, our area, including you know, providing better skills to the employees and also better employees for the for the employers. You know, so if you have any question, you can call me at the grad office 926-4433. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to the grad dialogue. My guest is Nick Palmer, you know, the conductor of the Owensboro Symphony Orchestra. Uh, and all of you know that the Nick has been widely recognized in our community and our region, and to some extent, you know, nationally too. Uh, for his talents and his excellence in uh, providing music education, you know, conducting symphonies. Uh, he has been uh, our, our, our conductor for, I would think, going on 16th year. That's right. Which is, uh, this is great for Owensboro. Along with that, and he's been very you know, active in, uh, in music conducting in the Lafayette Symphony in Indiana, uh, I believe also in Dubuque uh, Festival Orchestra in Iowa. Uh, and he has been uh, called the brilliant young music director by Leonard Slatskin of the Detroit Symphony Orchestra. And uh, you know, Nick Palmer has re the recipient of the Helen Thompson Award from the League of American Orchestra. That's a long list of uh, introduction, Nick. Uh, only thing I can say, the best thing that I can introduce to you is that he's our conductor. That's, That's right. That's all the audience know. got to see you know, <clears throat> and listen. Uh, let's uh, let's kind of talk about that. You know, we are in the beginning of the 2015 uh, in the orchestra season, you know, right. it's just kind of calendar or whatever that is, you know. Uh, so, you know, what do we expect from the remaining symphony that we, you have uh, scheduled for us? And well, you know, actually we have a lot of concerts uh -huh. left to go uh -huh. for this season, so that's very exciting. And our season runs kind of like the fiscal year. It runs from July 1st to June 30th. So coming up, we have a concert. Um, the next one is February 28th. That's going to be a really terrific mm -hmm. event. We're featuring a classical guitarist mm -hmm. who is uh, originally from Croatia. Actually, he still lives in Croatia. His family owns a vineyard in Croatia. They grow wine wow. there. Yeah. Uh, but he has performed all over the world. He won the International um, Young Artist Competition in New York City. Mm -hmm. And I think he's about the best classical guitarist I've ever heard. Oh, I, would, I would like to talk to him, uh, Nick, he's because great. Uh, I was in Croatia a year, two years ago. and. Uh, that's a very beautiful area. I can see yeah. the symphony that would be, you know, yeah. yeah. You know, um, if we're talking about what's, uh, what's happening in 2015, I think let's talk about what happened, the last symphony that people missed out. Yeah, well, we had, a, we had our holiday concert. Yes. It was, it was uh, absolutely yeah. terrific. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of different community groups involved in that one. Um, it was a terrific event. And uh, mm -hmm. that's one of the things we're, we're trying to do more of is collaborate with other groups in the community and certainly be part of uh, outreach in the community uh -huh. and, uh -huh. and get our name around and, and get people familiar with what we're doing. So when you, when, you, when you say the word outreach, I think that's something that is important to note is that uh, you don't have to uh, be a subscriber to, to really you know, experience the symphony and the talents that we have. You have quite a few free concerts that you know, give in the community for, you know, for to introduce the young and, and old generation to the music. That's right. Yeah. In fact, uh, coming up just the rest of the season, uh -huh. we have several uh, free concerts. We have um, one at Settle Memorial Church, which mm -hmm. will be on mm -hmm. a Sunday. And it's actually after our uh, March concert, which is the next major concert at River Park, the, the February 28th, again, I mentioned with the, with the classical guitarist. Mm -hmm. So anyone that likes uh, flamenco guitar or, you know, Latin guitar, I think they would love that concert. Mm -hmm. um, March 28th, we're doing a terrific Pops concert with uh, a guy named Tom Pandolfi, who's been here before, and it's all going to feature music uh, from James Bond movies. Oh, and okay. we're doing the actually a James Bond concerto that has themes from every James Bond m movie ever written. But the day after, on the 29th, we're doing a concert in Settle Memorial Church. That's a free concert. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, it will feature uh, a lot of different kinds of music. We have a combined chorus from several churches in Owensboro. We're going to have upwards of 150 singers uh, performing with the symphony on that free concert. Um, we have one, let's say our final concert of the year is uh, April 18th, and mm -hmm. that one is going to feature the symphony chorus. And uh, we have some great works on that one that people know, the William Tell Overture, the Pines of Rome. Uh, and then the day after that, we're doing another free concert. That would wow. be March 29th in St. Stephen's Cathedral. And we'll be uh, featuring the Kentucky Wesleyan Choir in that one. So really, we, we are not only bringing the guest artists from all the way from Croatia, 
but, it, but they're also utilizing the local talents and local you know uh, players right. to be kind of po work with your uh, symphony That's to right. ensure that. I know that you mentioned quite a few dates, you know, March, and lots April of and dates, yeah. And I don't think people are gonna remember that. So if uh, you know audience watching this, you know, if they want to find out exactly what is going on, how they can find out. You know? Best thing to do is to go to our website, uh -huh. and that is www.theoso.com. So uh -huh. T H E oso.com. Okay. That will give you all the information, um, let you know how to get tickets. Mm -hmm. We have uh, very reasonably priced tickets. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. If you want to buy a very expensive ticket and sit in the mezzanine or on the main floor, great. If you want to buy an inexpensive ticket, mm -hmm. we have great seats in the balcony. The great thing about River Park is it's almost, uh, I mean, everywhere you Everything sit is good. Right. Right. The, the sound is great. When you yeah. sit in the balcony, it's kind of fun because you get to really see the orchestra uh, right. really, really well right. from up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's, it's, it's a great experience. And we also have an app. We have an app as right. well that is free and that will give you all the information too. Uh -huh. And it's interesting because we're one of the few orchestras our size that has an app. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it's, it's a great thing for us. So you know, you can just have that on your phone and don't even have to go to the website. You can look on that and that'll tell you what we... So it's not just this you know, season subscription. You can you know, buy single tickets and you know, all even... Right. Yeah, that's, that's single excellent. tickets. You know, of course, a lot of these free concerts, one of the purposes for us to do those is uh -huh. to have people experience the symphony and hopefully they'll come back as subscribers. Mm -hmm. Especially exciting that we have our 50th season coming up. Right. That's something everyone's going to want to see. Well, I think that's, that's a great uh, segue because, uh, yes, I want to talk about that as well. That's a 50 years of symphony on that's Owensboro. Right. That's, that's right. amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So we're going to be doing all kinds of celebration. I said we because I'm I'm on the board, so yeah, I've got to right. say we. Yeah. Uh, however, and you already know all the secrets, <laughs> but we can't tell the public yet. But we're oh, going to yeah. announce that in March, okay. and uh, okay. maybe we can talk more about it another time on the show. But uh -huh. Uh -huh. there's uh, I just just as a preview for everybody, there's going to be some really remarkable things mm -hmm. next mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. uh, a blend of the best sought after international talent and the best sought after local talent. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. one thing that's great about this community. There's a lot of local talent. Right, right. right. And we're gonna feature quite a bit of it. Yeah. Let's, let's uh, you know, uh, the talk about uh, the symphony, kind of break it down. Where do the musicians come from? Uh, and, and you know, how do you recruit them? And then, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, uh, what the audience and then, like we see in the audience and in, in, in sitting inside the, you know, the River Park Center, mm -hmm. you know, great performance. But a lot of things goes behind the, behind the curtain. Right. So you know, kind of give us That's some right. insight on those. You know. Sure, sure. Well, our musicians come from as far away as four hours. Uh -huh. uh, we have uh, a handful that come from Owensboro, but the majority come from cities as far away as Bloomington, Indiana, Indianapolis, Louisville, Lexington, mm. Nashville, Cincinnati. We've had people come from as far away as St. Louis. So they come from the entire region. That's one of the great things about the location of Owensboro. It's near so many large cities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When we have auditions for the orchestra, we'll get a lot of people auditioning for, you know, we may have 50 people audition for one position. Mm -hmm. So we get mm -hmm. some really, really good talent. We're fortunate to have one of the best concert halls in the region. Mm -hmm. River Park is a phenomenal concert hall for orchestral music. And we have a really great staff of really dedicated professionals who make things happen. Those are the mm -hmm. folks that work behind the scenes and, you know, make sure everything runs smoothly. Um, mm -hmm. The musicians are paid. It's a professional orchestra, but we don't have a lot of rehearsal time. So that's, we benefit from the fact that they're right. very, very good musicians. Right. Right. And I, I think, you know, uh, all of them, all those things does take money. You yes. know, even though you it know does. that the uh, you know we get some revenue from the ticket sales and citizen right. subscribers, but right. I think the success of the uh, symphony has been with uh, you know tremendous uh, continuous support from the city of Owensboro, city Davis of County Owensboro, Fiscal Court, Davis County Fiscal uh -huh. Court, many local corporations uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. have have sponsored uh, events for us. Plus, we get a lot of private donations. Right. And the thing is. Right. Any donation is very welcome. I mean, if right. you want to give five dollars to the symphony, that's fabulous. And there mm -hmm. are so many citizens in the community that have kept the symphony uh, moving in the right direction. We continue to evolve and be more innovative and come up mm -hmm. with, in fact, a, a lot of uh, a lot of new things coming next year. Uh, changes to the way the concerts are. Right. A lot of cool right. ideas. Right. You know, you you you've been over the years not only being in you know, Owensboro for fifteen or sixteenth year now. 
but he'd been to all over the country along with and all over the world, you know, attending or conducting symphonies and everything else. You know, and you stayed here with us 16 years, you know. So what is that, you know, what is it, how um, that the community needs to support this, you know, and you know, what comes to your mind that, you know, we had this best kept secret that, you know, we should really embrace more than we are doing, you know, on the right. symphony. Right. Well, the, the symphony is so important to economic development in the community. You know, so many business will look at Owensboro and they'll say, well, what do they have going for them? And uh, look at all the different things. And a symphony is a really important part of that. So that's one thing. Um, the symphony is just a really special part of civilization. Right. And right. it's one of those great things that, you know, people when they come for the first time and they hear us, they're really blown away and they want to come back. We just need to get people in the, in the a hall. Uh, to hear us, and um, that's why we do a lot of things on the outside and free concerts to bring them, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. bring the symphony out in the community as well. well Nick, I think you know we have a you know great season uh, <clears throat> going right now in 2015. We're gonna have a 2016, the 50th anniversary. Uh, but you know, even though you won't be able to tell us right now what you have <laughs> planned next year, but you can uh, guarantee the audience that it's gonna be fun, exciting. And are we going to continue some of the some of the programs that we have this year? Yeah, we will. We'll be continuing a lot of the free concerts uh -huh. again next year. Uh, continue to do more and more educational programs. We're also looking to expand our um, community outreach and community engagement. So uh -huh. you'll be seeing the symphony out in the community more. In the school system. In the schools, mm -hmm. and, and you know, in other places too. Right. You know, places right. you wouldn't expect to see the symphony. Uh -huh. That's our way of getting into the community and giving back to the community. Uh -huh. Well, so you're gonna, you are continuing with the 4th of July celebration? 4th of July, we have concert on the lawn. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, um, White on 2nd? White on 2nd, right. you know, the holiday concert, all those uh -huh. things, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. I think it's great, uh, you know, those of, those, of, uh, those of you watching this show, you know, and if you have not been to the symphony or, you know, to any show or not a subscriber, please consider that. It's, it's uh, probably one of the most inexpensive way of getting the quality, uh, you know, right. uh, music and also the entertainment uh, in, in Owensboro, and we are so proud that you are with us. And, Thank uh, you. you know, that, uh, you know, it's a privilege and a pleasure to be here. Yeah. It's a wonderful community. Yeah, we're looking forward to you know your, uh, uh, I guess, uh, you know, uh, tricks from the bag and the tools from your bag <laughs> yeah. to really have a 50th anniversary celebrations. Yeah. You know, maybe almost every day something's going to be coming up. So. And, uh, and, and I want to thank you, you know, for, you know, My for staying with us, too. Thank you. Again, we're talking to Nick Palmer, our conductor, the Owensboro Symphony Orchestra, we're talking about the 2015 season that is going on now and, uh, and also what's coming up in 2016. Uh, if you would like to find out you know, some of the dates and events like scheduled by the symphony, please go on the website. You said uh, theoso.com. That's it. Or they go the you know, maybe install an app. This app is OSO also, I think, the OSO yes. app. Yeah. Again, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, call me or call Nick at the Symphony office. Thank you.